let us start with another example of a language which is not regular and we prove by pumping lemma that it is not regular language. Uh, the language we will consider is uh, this one. Firstly, this language is a unary language that means, the alphabet for the language has only one symbol. So, therefore, the language uh, in this case is a set of strings, each of which each string is just a bunch of ones. And uh, our language will satisfy this L is all those strings over the alphabet just one such that x is of the form one to the power n squared, where n is greater than So, basically what we are saying is, you can take n equal to 1, n equal to 2, n equal to 3 and so on. If n equal to 1, then the string that you get is 1 to the power n squared, which is 1. So, basically 1. So, this is in the language L. When n equal to 2, then n square is 4. So, there are 1 to the power 4, which is of course, concatenation of 4 ones and this is also in the language L and n equal to 3, this is 9. So, therefore, this is 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and this string is also in the language and so on. Right? On the other hand, this string 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, just 5 ones is not in the language our language L, because this is 1 power 5 and 5 is not a perfect square. Right. <coughs> so, you would like to show that this language is not regular and we will use the pumping lemma. You recall pumping lemma statement was this, which we have gone through once and uh, this is saying in order to use this lemma to prove this particular language is not regular. We need to first of all select we somebody will I mean this lemma says that there is a k so, will our proof should be able to handle any k that might be given. So, we just keep it as an indeterminate and we say that let k be the, so we'll of course, first we will have to say that our proof, we are proving proof that L is not regular. And the proof is by contradiction. So, we start by saying suppose L is regular. And now, we can invoke the pumping lemma for this. So, we see because we have assumed L to be regular and then we derive a contradiction we say let k be the pumping lemma constant for L. Now, we need to select a string in order to invoke non trivially this lemma, some string in the language 
whose length is greater than k. So, in fact, it will be convenient to consider 1 k square itself. And clearly, this string is in the language, whatever be the k. So, the pumping lemma constant k, we are considering the string 1 k to the power k square. And now, we invoke the pumping lemma. What, it, what does the lemma say? That this string 1 to the power k square, let us say this is my string 1 to the power k square. And there is u v w, this whole string is u v w and this string was of course, 1 to the power k square such that u v w of course, is the string x and u v together its length is less than equal to k. So, suppose this is u this is v, this is w and by my saying that length of u v is less than equal to k. And from the lemma I get also, so from here I am getting that length of v is less than equal to k, but of course, length of v is strictly greater than 0 other condition length of v is strictly greater than 0. So, v is a non empty set, non empty string, its length may be 1 or at most it can be k. So, now consider the string u v v w. This particular string is also in the language that is what the lemma is asserting. I have used i equal to 2. So, this is in the language L. What can we say about the length of this string? An upper bound on the length of this string is u v v w. u v w is of course, that length is k square plus we have added a v that length is at most k. So, this is bounded by k square Actually, we have got a contradiction already, because this the lemma is saying that some string whose length is k square plus k bounded by that and consisting only of 1. So, in other words, let me write it like this. The lemma is saying that 1 to the power m is in the language L where length of m, let me write it this way, is strictly greater than k square or rather the, the m itself is. m is strictly greater than k square and less than equal to k square plus k. In other words, it is saying that there is a string in the language whose length is greater than strictly greater than 1 to the power k square and that string's length is bounded by k square plus k. But can that be? Because you see what is that string which is in the language and whose length is who, which whose length is greater than this string. The very next string after 1 to the power k square will be 1 to the power k plus 1 whole square and this is the next string. This is the string in the language of course and the very next string greater than this particular string will have length. Therefore, k square plus 2 k plus 1 
On the other hand, the lemma is saying that there is a string whose length is at most k squared plus k. So, this is strictly less than k squared plus 2 k plus 1 and therefore, you have the contradiction. Right. So, really speaking what the fact that we are exploiting in this proof that if there is a string in the language supposing this is the set of all strings over the alphabet 1. So, this is the all the elements of 1 star. If we have a string in the language then the next string comes after a long gap and this gap keeps increasing as we go down. Right? Because what is the gap here? 2 k plus 1. From k it is 2 k plus 1, next one will be even bigger and so on. However, lemma says that the next string gap is at most k and that is the fact. This particular fact is being contradicted by the implication of the lemma. All right, We have seen couple of examples of how to use the pumping lemma to prove some language to be non regular. Now, let us prove the lemma all right, which we have not done yet so far. And the proof is fairly simple, because the moment you say L is regular, you see the pumping lemma starts by the from the assumption that L is regular. So, we say since L is regular, there is a DFA n m to accept it right. In other words, L of m is the language L. This is a DFA and let k be the number of states in M. That means, the cardinality of the set of states of M is k. Let x is in L and x length of x is greater than equal to okay. So, this is your x and the length of x is greater than equal to k. Now, consider the first k symbols of x. So, let us see the first k symbols is this part of the string x. Right. So, the length of this is exactly k and what do we know of x? That x is a string in the language. Therefore, if you start the machine m at its initial state q 0, then the machine finally will be some state which is in the final state of one of the final states of or accepting states of the machine m. So, I am using the old notation that m is the DFA m is 5 to the 5 to the q sigma delta q 0 f. So, far what we have said is x is accepted by m. In other words, 
delta hat of q 0 x right, is q f, because we are saying that q f is the state it goes to, which is an element of f. Right. Now, recall one thing that we noticed right in the beginning while discussing DFA. Suppose, I have a string of symbols. So, I, mean, I do not mean zeros, but let, let me just say these symbols. Okay. And remember, let me write it more carefully. So, this is one symbol, this is the next 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 symbol. And we consider the sequence of states the machine goes through as it reads the string. So, it reads this from state q 0 it goes to may be a state q i 1, then the next symbol it goes to q i 2 and q i n. The way I have written that this sequence has, the sequence of states has is of length n plus 1. And what is the, in this case, what is the length of the sequence of symbols? It is n, right, because on 1, if the string had only 1 symbol, then the sequence of states the machine goes through will have 2 states and so on. You can see, supposing it is 2, the string had only 2 symbols, then the sequence will be 1, 2, 3 of length 3 and so on. So, if the if the string had n symbols, then the sequence of states through which the machine goes that will have precisely n plus 1, uh, the its length will be n plus 1, the sequence of strings, sequence of states for an n length. So, let me write it clearly that for an n length string, the length of the sequence of states, the DFA goes through is n plus Now, this part of the string we said is exactly of length k. Now, what does it mean? The sequence of states through which the machine will go on this part of the string which is of length k, this sequence is of length k plus 1 from the fact that we have written. Now, this is the most crucial observation that the sequence of states is of length k plus 1 and totally how many states are there? k, because that is what we have assumed. Let k be the number of states in m and the sequence has 1 more than the total number of states, one more the length of the sequence is one more than the total number of states in the machine. Therefore, by pigeonhole principle, they will be at least one state 
which will occur more than once once in this sequence, which is the sequence we are talking of? The sequence of states the machine goes through on the first k symbols of the string x. Right? So, in fact, let me see it in picture, some kind of a picture that this is your string x right? and this is the sequence of states. Now, we are talking of the first k symbols, the string consisting substring, the first prefix a prefix of the string x of length k and here it is the sequence of states that we are talking of q 0, sorry some let us say q here. Finally, of course, it goes to q f. Now, q 0 to some q, this sequence of states there must be some state which is which repeats at least once. You can see this is a very simple uh, use of the pigeonhole principle that we learned in discrete maps. Now, again, if you look at this, you can see between two states, even if they are adjacent, there will be at least one symbol between two states in the sequence, between any two states in the sequence, there will be at least one symbol, even if the two states are adjacent like in this case. So, what I can say is the following. Let me say, let us focus on this picture and what two things that we already know that delta hat of q 0 x is q f which is in the one of the final states and let me call this to be this part the part of the string which brings me from q 0 brings the d f a from q 0 to p which is this first occurrence of the state which occurs more than once. This part let me call u right and in state p from the very from the very next symbol to this part, what is this part of the string doing? It is taking the machine from the state p back to p. So, let me write it in this way that delta hat of this is remember this is delta hat delta hat of u 0 u what was u? U, u was the part of the string, the initial part of the string which took the machine from the initial state to the state p which is going to occur once more. Delta hat to q 0 to u is this p and this part let me call v. So, delta hat of p to v is also p right, because this v part, this u part took the machine from q 0 to p, v part is taking the machine from p to p right. And now, we do not care about anything else, but let me call all the rest of the string after v, whatever is left in x, let me call it w. So, what can I say about w? 
P W will take the machine from the state P to Q S, right? Okay. Now the rest of the proof is a simple application of these facts. Now, what will happen on the string u, let us say v v w, what can we say the behavior of the machine from q 0 to the string. Now, let us look at this, we will just use these facts. So, q 0, I mean it is easy to see what is going to happen q 0, this this is we start from q 0, first we go to look at the part of the string which is u, the prefix of the string which is u, that takes the machine. So, if this is your u, then this is v, now we have another copy of v and then finally, w. We have said the machine takes machine goes from q 0 to p on u, the machine goes from p to p on v, now another copy of v is there, but the machine cannot there is no reason for machine to behave differently, because there is a deterministic machine. So, it sees v, so it goes again to p. In other words, you see this is also going to be q f, because now from p on w it will go to q f. We can we can write it like this way, that I can say that this is what is this delta hat of q 0 u, this is the state the machine goes to after seeing the first part u. Now, it is C v, now again it sees, so this is the state the machine will be after it sees u and v, now it sees another copy of v, so this whole thing is one state and now it sees v, so delta hat this is going to be the state the machine is going to be after seeing u v v and then finally, we have w, we will put another delta hat right. This is what is this? So, I can I can argue it out using this facts delta hat of q 0 u was p. So, let me substitute p here. then delta hat of p of p and v is p. So, this whole thing reduces to again p. So, let me write it. p. Then delta hat of p of v is again p. So, you see this is let me write it clearly delta hat of delta hat of p v w and this is delta hat of p of v is again p delta hat of p of v is p. So, this becomes p delta hat of p w is q f. So, this is what I had asserted earlier and this is now I have shown you the proof. q f is of course, an element of f. Now, what does this mean? That since u v v w takes the machine from q 0 to q f, therefore, 
what I have is that u v v w is also in the language L. Right? And this argument will be true if you have not just one extra copy, but if you put any number of v's. So, let us say I had u v v v w u is going to take q 0 the machine from the state q 0 to p according to this v is going to take the machine from p to p this v will also take the machine from p to p this p to p p to p and w will take the machine back to q l. So, therefore, this string is also in the language L. We have proved for all i greater than equal to 1, what happens when i equal to 0? That means, we are talking of the string u w, when i equal to 0, that means, we are talking of the string u v 0 w v 0 by definition v to the power 0 by definition is if you recall in the beginning we talked of this is the empty string u epsilon which is u w. So, now let us look at u w the machine initially in the state q 0 q 0 starting from q 0 on u it will go to the state p p on w it will go to q f. So, again u w is in the language same language l. So, therefore, for all i as the lemma states greater than equal to 0 the string u v to the power i w is in the language l. If you want to be very formal, you will redo this proof using induction on i, right, and that is easy. Basically, we will try to show that for all i, you want to prove this. Use induction on i. Start by saying suppose i equal to zero. Then we are talking of the string u w. Using this facts, we know that u w will be in the language then assume in that induction proof it is going to be that suppose the statement is true for all i up to some n and then you would prove by induction by your induction step that u v to the power n plus 1 w also will be in the language. But the idea of the proof is very clear this is how we will go about doing it. Now, several things we need to say about this lemma and uh, we will uh, say these things because sometimes we do not if we do not fully understand the content of this lemma or what it is saying exactly we make mistakes in applying it now let us look at the logic way of looking at this statement. How, how, what is this assertion? You know, it is saying first of all at the top level, this lemma is of the form L regular. implies certain things. So, let me call that all these things that it implies. Right. So, you know we are saying this statement goes like this let L be regular then. So, L is regular implies this whole thing then etcetera this part I am calling it A. Now, look at A now the statement A. What is A saying? A is basically the statement, we start with this, there is a constant k. 
there is constant k which depends on the language. So, once you have fixed L, this is a constant k, there is a constant k, then it is saying such that for all x, for all x, right, x is in L and length of x is greater than k. After that, what you are saying? Now, you are saying there exists u v w, there exists u v w and now we are asserting certain things about the relationship between u v w and x and certain conditions on k and then we are saying uh, certain other strings also will be there in the language. So, let us write it in the formalism of logic. It is saying that the string x is u v w, that is the first thing we said. Then we are saying, let me use this notation and already used it here. Then we are saying that length of u v is less than equal to k and our next conjunct is length of v is greater than 0 and finally, we are saying for all i u v i w is also in the language for all i greater than equal to 0. Right? This, this is the formalism of logic, I have just rewritten that. The purpose for doing this is to clearly tell you, when you are giving a proof used to show a particular language to be not regular, it is very, very necessary to keep these things at least intuitively in our mind. Suppose, we wish to show using this lemma that some language L is not regular. What do we do? We will first assume in our proof, the structure of the proof is what I am trying to tell you. We will first assume that let L be regular. The moment you say L is regular, then this statement is true and that statement says there is a k. Now, in my proof, can I say for example, that k is 593? I cannot do that. Why? Because this is not in the hand of the prover. There is this k. Therefore, this k should be, my proof should be ready to use any k which is given to me. Right? Sometimes, these kinds of proofs can be seen as a game between two people. One is an adversary, his goal is to prove you wrong and your goal is to prove L is not regular. So, what you are going to do? You will, your adversary is going to give you a k, then you will pick up an x, right. So, the, so in that game, if you, if you, if you, the adversary moves are, adversary starts with this existential quantifier move. So, he picks any k. So, you, you should be ready in your proof to use any k, whichever may, whatever might be given, but then it is your turn in the game. You will take some language, it is because this part is saying for all x. Therefore, we have complete freedom to choose any x, so long that x is in the language and its length is greater than equal to k. Right? So, the 
discovery part of the proof is to come up with prop some proper x so given any k right we choose an x which is which will satisfy this. Now, what is our goal is to come up with finally, on pumping a string which is not in the language. By now, you have seen the kind of proofs that we have seen make, making use of the pumping lemma. So, we choose x. Now, these existential quantifiers are there. So, sometimes beginners they choose an x and then they say let u be this, v be this, w be this. That will be wrong. That proof is wrong. What you have to now be prepared to carry out your argument for any breakup of u v w, of course, which is which will be given by the adversary, but adversary has to obey these that u v w together is the string x and length of u v is less than equal to k and the length of v is strictly greater than 0. So, once you have chosen x, then what is the next part of the proof? So, this is your x, then for any breakup of u v w, of the string x, which, which obeys the constraints, these two constraints, the total length of u v is less than equal to k and v is non empty. You should be able to find an i so, adversary gives you u v and w. So, we choose an x. Now, given any u v w satisfying constraints, I or let me write it in fact, satisfying constraints. You see? Now, it is in my hand to choose an i. We find an i and to derive the contradiction such that this i should be such that that u v i w is not in the language and then therefore, I win the game. So, in the in that model of adversary versus the prover game, adversary chooses k, the prover chooses some appropriate x in the language. Now, once that x is chosen, adversary gives a breakup of u v x in terms of u v w satisfying these constraints. Then, prover chooses an i and he manages to win the game, if he finds a u v i w, which is not in the language, because you got a contradiction, because u v i w according to the lemma, it has to be in the language, but by definition our i is such that you have seen this example, that on pumping I am getting a string, which the definition of the language tells me could not be in the language. So, therefore, I get a contradiction and therefore, the supposition L is regular brings me to a contradiction and therefore, I conclude that L is not regular. So, this is the overall structure of the proof. I want to emphasize again in these proofs, when we use pumping lemma, I should be able to use given any k, then I choose an appropriate x then for any breakup of u v w of that x, I should be able to find out an i such that u v i w 
is not in the language which I would like to show is not regular. That is the first thing I said, uh, wanted to make a point the, the structure of the proof making use of the pumping lemma. The second thing comes from here, just the top statement. The pumping lemma says that if L is regular, then certain conditions will be true. The natural question is, is the converse true? So, what is the converse? If L satisfies A, A is remember this part of the proof uh, of the lemma. If L satisfies A, then L is regular. This is the converse, right? Actually, it is not very difficult to see the converse is false. And how do I show that con converse is false? I actually give a counter example in which the language A language will satisfy these conditions A and yet the language is not regular. So, proof is by counter example. And that counter example language L, where L is defined to be a i b j c k. First thing is i j k, these are all greater than equal to 0. And now, the interesting part, the constraint is if i is equal to 1, then j is equal to k. So, for example, the string a B B B C C C is in the language L. Why? Because it is of the form some bunch of A is followed by a bunch of B is followed by a bunch of C's. And since there is exactly one A, right, I equal to 1, then the number of B's is equal to the number of C's. So, this is in the language. Now, on the other hand, if I had a bunch of A's more than one A's, then there is no really constraints on the length of B's and C's, right. I could have had one B and maybe many C's. This will be also in the language. Okay. It is not too difficult to see what this language is. And I would like to show this language satisfies all these, which came in the you know. Remember, we look, we are looking at from the then part. So, in fact, let me say there is a con it says there is a constant k. Let me just say the k is three. And you take any string which is in the language whose length is 3 or more, then what should be the u v w if I assert such that for all i u v i w is in the language and that rule is kind of simple also that if so basically consider an x 
in the language and length of x is greater than equal to 3. And now, if x has exactly two ways, right. So, a a, then I have a number of b's according to, since it is in the language uh, L, if you see that there is no constraints on how many b's and how many c's should be there. So, we have a number of b's, number of c's. Then what I do is, in this case, u is empty epsilon, v is this part a and w is rest of x. Just let us verify that on pumping, we are not going out of the language. Because if I pump down, that means I will take out these both a's, because v will be taken out then I have just a bunch of b's, bunch of c's, which is ok. There is no relation on the lengths of b's and c's. Since i is not equal to 1, there need not be any relation. On the other hand, if you pump any number of times, you will get more and more a's, but again you will not get a single a, which is when a constraint comes. So, it is easy to see if I choose v as this part, both the a's, then we can pump any amount of time and the this resultant string still will be in the language. If x has exactly two a's, then this is the situation. Otherwise, choose u as epsilon, v as the first symbol of x, and rest as w. You should be able to verify that even in this case, on pumping v, which is just one symbol, nothing is going to happen. Now, do you see what was the point of here? The problem would be, let us see with a string like this. I had one, two a's and here I had three b's and two c's. This will be in the language L according to the definition, this is in the language L. And now, if v was only 1 a for example, then when I pump down, I will have a 1 a, but now I have the length of b's and c's do not match and therefore, I will get a string which is not in the language. And thereby, the condition a will not be satisfied, right. So, overall conclusion is for this language L, the conclusion of pumping lemma holds. However, the language itself is not regular. So, the con converse does not therefore, hold. Here is a language L, which satisfies all these things. There is a constant k, we took that k as 3, then we said take any string in the language, whose length is 3 or more and then given such a string in the language, we can break it up in u v w such that on pumping v, we do not go out of the language. Therefore, this conclusion of pumping lemma holds and yet the language L is not regular. Actually, how do I show that this particular language is not regular? I, I stated that this language L is not regular. How do I show? Because now I, I'm, I know that I cannot use this pumping lemma 
to prove this particular language to be not regular. Because why? Because here is a k which is 3 in fact, for which you know the conclusion of the pumping lemma holds. So, we do not go do not get into any contradiction. Now, we can prove this to be not regular by using a slight generalization of this lemma. Let me state the lemma. Here is a language L, which happens to be not regular, but I cannot prove that it is not regular by using this pumping lemma. And I just showed you that pumping lemma is not going to give me any contradiction. But then how do we show this L is not regular? We can show by means of a slight generalization of this lemma, which we will consider next. Mm -hmm.